Hello and welcome. This is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary in Seattle Public Schools. Today we have a fifth grade reading lesson, and this is in your Making Meaning book, Unit 9, Week 3, and Day 3. This unit is all about synthesizing, which means bringing together different ideas and genres. And our focus this week is on opinions, making opinions, and then how we support those opinions with evidence. The materials you're gonna to need today are some sticky notes. And if you don't have sticky notes, you can just use some cut up squares of paper. You're gonna need a pencil to write with, and you're gonna need a book to read during our independent daily reading. The book can be any genre, and if you prefer, you can even read an article or magazine. The topic we're expressing our opinions about this week is year-round school. That means going to school all year round instead of having a summer break. In our last lesson, we read this article by Chance T from Imperial, Nebraska, and it was called Year-Round School, I'm For It. And the author told us all the different reasons he thinks year-round school is good. We've been adding these reasons to our pros and cons chart. So far for pros, we have year-round school is less summer brain drain and more time to learn. It saves schools money. There's more flexibility for families. First day back is easier. You can take three to four short trips and see more places. After kids in a study tried it for a year, more of them liked it. Learning time in year-round school is the same as traditional school. And students return to school refreshed and more ready to learn. We only have three cons so far. There are no proven gains in academic achievement. There's no long summer break to relax, be with friends and family, or go camp. And costs of running year-round schools are greater. We're definitely going to add more to our cons chart today. We're going to read this article, Year-Round School, I'm Against It, by Anonymous in Temecula, California. If you've never heard that word, anonymous means having no name or not being identified by name. And when someone writes something and signs it anonymous, it means they don't want you to know that they wrote it. We're gonna start reading here. Year Round School, I'm Against It, by Anonymous from Temecula, California. During the summer, most kids are out of school and enjoying time at home or on a family trip. But some kids go to school all summer long and it's not because they have to go to summer school. It's because their school is on a year-round schedule. When my friends in year-round schools tell me they can't spend time with me during my summer break because they're in school, I'm sad and disappointed. In the 2011-2012 school year, more than 3,000 schools in the United States followed a year-round schedule. According to a 2010 survey conducted by Wake County Public School System in North Carolina, about 45% of parents said that schools should be on a year-round schedule, and about 49% said that they should not. Year-round schooling has its pros and cons. I'm against year-round schools for several reasons. I want you to turn to your partner now. And remember, your partner can be a friend or family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal, or it can be someone you're calling on an imaginary phone. Also, if you are more comfortable speaking a language other than English, go ahead and talk in whatever language you feel most comfortable. But turn to your partner now and ask them this question. What did you learn in the part of the essay you just heard? Maybe you said 
that you learned that parents are actually really divided on the issue of year-round schools. Because according to the essay, it said that about half of the parents think it's a good idea, and about half think it's bad. Let's keep reading. First, family vacations are usually planned for the summer break. Typically, this is a time to see relatives, relax, spend time as a family, and have fun. Year-round school schedules limit the time families have for summer vacations. Kids in year-round schools also don't have time to go to summer camp. At camp, kids get to be outdoors, make new friends, and learn nature facts. If schools everywhere were on a year-round schedule, summer camps might cease to exist. And cease to exist just means they would not be around anymore at all. Summer camps might cease to exist. What arguments does the author make in the part you just heard about why year-round schools are a bad idea? Turn to your partner. You might have said that no more summer camp. This idea that summer camps would just be non-existent is the argument that the author just made in that section. Let's keep reading. The school year is filled with tests, quizzes, homework, and studying. After all that hard work, Students deserve a summer break to relax and refresh. There are some who argue that kids forget things they have learned during a long summer break. I think they're wrong because kids still use their brains during the summer. A 2011 study by the Rand Corporation showed that students who went to a summer camp or participated in another type of educational summer program not only had fun, but also kept information in their heads. If kids are concerned about forgetting what they learned over the summer, they can ask their teachers for summer homework packets so they will be ready for next year. Year-round school also makes it harder for students to get summer jobs. Students going to schools with traditional schedules can commit to two-month summer jobs and earn money for college. Students in year-round schools don't have the time to fill summer job openings. Summer is to be enjoyed, not spent in classrooms. Should we change to a year-round school calendar that shortens summer vacation? The answer, I think, is that we should not. What other arguments does the author make in the part you just heard? Why year-round schools are a bad idea. Turn to your partner. You might have said, that according to the author, kids still use their brains in the summer. Or maybe you said that the author says it's harder to get summer jobs to save for college. You're going to reread this article now silently by yourself. And while you're reading, I want you to think about these questions. First, do you agree or disagree with the opinion expressed in the essay? What part of the essay supports your opinion, or what part makes you disagree, and why? And did your opinion change during the second reading? Why or why not? Go ahead and start rereading by yourself.
Let's discuss this article. Do you agree or disagree with the author? Why? Well, you could agree or disagree. The most important thing is that you explain your thinking. Maybe you agree with the author and think year-round school is terrible because your family likes to take long vacations every summer and it's your favorite part of the year. Maybe you disagree with the author because you think the idea of having lots of little breaks throughout the year is a really, really fun idea. What did you read in the essay or think about that supports your opinion? Hmm. Well, this question gets down to evidence. And there's so much evidence you could use to back up whatever opinion you have. Maybe you're using evidence it comes from your own thoughts or experiences. Like my example before, you might hate the idea of year-round school because you have the experience of having vacations in the summer and you really like those. You could also have evidence that comes from the more specific parts of the text. Maybe you noticed that Rand Corporation study that the author included that said that students who went to camp didn't actually lose any knowledge over the summer. You could use that as evidence to support your opinion that year-round schools are bad. Now it's time for our independent daily reading. Here are your instructions. You're gonna pick anything you wanna read and you're gonna read for 10 minutes and think about these questions about independent reading over here to the right. Use those questions to produce opinions about what you read. Write your opinions on sticky notes or squares of paper. Then after 10 minutes, you're gonna go back and reread from where you started. and You're gonna write down evidence to support your opinions. Do this three times, so you read for 30 minutes or more. I'm gonna continue modeling this with the book Dragons in a Bag by Zeta Elliott. We left off yesterday and the main character, Jackson, was being left with his grandma by his mom. It was kind of interesting though, because the grandma didn't really want him and the mom was really sad, trying to persuade him, her, to keep him. We're going to keep reading here, and I'll put a post-it whenever I have an opinion. But it's not okay with mama. She's whispering to the woman behind the door, but her smile is gone now. And there are tears shining on her cheeks. I want to hold mama's hand but instead I take another step back and hold on to the straps of my book bag. Mama's saying one word over and over again. Please. I have never seen my mother beg anyone for anything, but it doesn't work because the door finally closes. Mama rests her forehead against it before wiping her eyes and turning to me. Let's go, Jax. She says wearily. I sigh with relief and take Mama's hand. Just as we walk, start to walk down the stairs, I hear the chain slide and the door opens once more. One day. Give me your word, Alicia. One day. Mama says, I promise, Ma. Then she pulls me back over to my grandmother's apartment. The door is open, but the lights are off, and I can't see anyone inside. Mama gives me a quick hug and pushes me through the doorway. Before I can ask her when she'll be back, Mama rushes down the stairs and is gone. 
I'm going to put a post-it note here and write an opinion. And I'm going to look at those questions about independent reading. Hmm. I'm going to answer the first one. Is the story you are reading holding your interest and why? I'll say the story is holding my interest. But that's all I'm going to say for now. Chapter two, I step inside the dark apartment. Lock the door, boy, my grandmother growls. I look at the three locks on the door and decide just to flip the one closest to the knob in case I have to make a quick exit. Then I let my eyes adjust to the shadows before searching for my grandmother. The apartment smells musty, but it looks tidy. The living room has two big windows with heavy curtains that shut out one that shut out the spring sunshine. I'm gonna write another opinion here. Hmm. And I'm gonna look at those questions again. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna answer the second one. I'm gonna say, grandmother is interesting. Now, for you, you're going to read for 10 minutes. I'm just going to read these two pages. But now we need to go back and find evidence for these opinions. So let's see. My first post it says the story is holding my opinion or my interest. And I'm going to look for evidence. I'm going to say the reason I think that is I don't know what's going to happen next in the story. Is Jax going to stay with his grandma? Or not? Okay. I'm going to look for evidence for my second opinion that I wrote down that the grandmother is interesting. Hmm. I'm going to say the reason I think that is she is mysterious. For example, her apartment is dark. Smells funny. Make sure you do this for three different cycles of 10 minutes. So you're reading for at least 30 minutes, writing down all your opinions and finding evidence to support them. All right, let's get reading. Thank you so much for being here, and we will see you next time.